And many of you would already know, as those of you who you know, work really closely with these schools or in these schools, that it's almost seen as, as the kind of mission of these schools to transform students. You know, the, the messages that are coming through education, the ways in which things are organised in schools, they send a really clear indication to us that, that schools have to produce students of a particular kind. So my first point is that um, you know, we, we shouldn't be trying to conform to that notion of, of producing one type of, of good student. But this kind of thinking also relies on the out outcomes of, of schooling. So you know, we also need our universities to you know, think about accepting students and employers taking students on if they don't meet this definition of, of what a good student might be. So in, in that regard, it's, it's also about transforming relationships that schools might have with the places that they connect with, so with our vet providers, with our employers and with our universities, and coming to some sort of a consensus about trying to broaden out what the definition of, of a good student is and valuing those diverse knowledges and experiences that they bring. So my second point is that while some teachers in, in low socioeconomic schools work really hard to transform their students, which is completely understandable, given that we have students in, in contexts who feel constrained by the very difficult circumstances in which they live. The research suggests that teachers and schooling should also be valuing and giving voice to who our students are in the ways that they identify themselves. So we want our students to be able to recognise possibilities and, and act in ways that might transform their situations. But we also have to ask ourselves whether it's appropriate to transform these students, which can work in ways to pathologise the backgrounds that they're bringing. And, and we don't want to send those messages. We don't want to pathologise their backgrounds and send messages of disappointment in these kids. We don't want to tell them that they don't know the right things, they don't value the right things, they don't want the right things, particularly from many of us uh, who are in the position as those endowed with that legitimate middle class cultural capital. And this takes me to my third point, um, which draws on the research of, of Deb Hayes, Bob Lingard, Martin Mills and Pam Christie. So like, like them, I would argue that teachers should ende en endeavour to develop in students a sense of transformative possibility. But at the same time, we need to be concerned to transform schooling and, and really concerned about providing educational opportunities that might transform life experiences of our young people, but especially those who are disadvantaged by poverty and, and marginalised by other types of difference. And I guess to give you a bit of an idea, the kinds of opportunities that, that I have in mind when I think about um, you know, providing those educational opportunities are those that reflect a commitment beyond simply keeping students at school. It has to be about making schooling meaningful for them. It's about providing opportunities where our kids can experience success but in, in, at the same time ensuring that we maintain that academic rigour. Um, and I know those of you who know, you know about the quality teaching framework would, would know all about that and those high expectations. And it's also about finding ways to try and broaden the views of our students and especially for those who, who might, demonstrate an might not demonstrate an ability to imagine you know, future possibilities, particularly those who are from, from very difficult backgrounds.